Okay, I'm back. And if you notice any discrepancies with the levels of my heroes in this level, particularly my apprentice and my jester, it's because I progressed a little bit further and then realized that I hadn't been recording audio. So we're going to be redoing this, but you won't really be able to tell the difference. It'll just... I'll have gained a couple extra levels more than I should have, basically. Um, so yeah, I just finished doing moon base on hard. I uh, got the rest of my fish bowls. And next on the agenda is Arcane Library on Insane for uh, accessories and pets. Namely, a, um, a genie and uh, guardian pets. Which I should probably unequip this <laughs> since I shouldn't have got this yet. Spoiler, a slight spoiler alert there. Um, right, so let's go over the current stats. Right, so this is... Yeah, Arcane Library on Insane. And now the reason we do it on Insane is because the accessory rewards you get from this are based on or the, what quality they roll is based on the difficulty of the map. So if you run this map on insane, you get mythical accessories. The accessories are locked to mythical quality. And then if you run it on nightmare, you get transcendent locked accessories. And at this point in the game, I will, I mean, I, yeah, they're not, only my jester is level 78. So none of my characters can even use transcendent accessories yet. Now, an option is to just level to 78 before doing this. Or even level your characters while you're doing Nightmare. So by the time you get to... Uh... By the time you farmed up usable accessories, you will be able to, you know, be, be high enough level to use them, basically. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to put this up here and then just move that aura a bit closer. We can have it like here. That's, that's in range, right? I think the issue is going to be that it... Yeah, that, that'll be fine. Just have to replace the buff beam. But the way I'm doing it, I'm just going to be getting some mythical accessories. And then moving on to um, Nightmare. Yeah, let's see. What do I want to do? Do some Hermit Towers. Let's see, I think I'm going to do Seed Bomb like that. And then two like that. And then the rest we can do Apprentice Towers. No, you pesky archer. Okay, we've got 60 U left, so... I think I'm going to play some web walls. It's enough DU for three web walls. And if you do decide to complete this map on um, 
a nightmare instead, then you that'll be the first map you need for Eternal Defender. That's uh, one you can cross off the list. Now let's see, how do we want to do this? Just like... Uh, Just like that, I suppose. And then I'll put one here. And we'll put one here. Actually, I don't think I care about this here. I think I'd rather have it over here. So, the plan after this episode, or this map, is probably going to be... I'm thinking we just do Ember Mount on... We do the first wave of Ember Mount on Nightmare Hardcore to level up all of our characters to um, 78. And then we can go back to doing this map on Nightmare. Uh, get get our characters all decked out in accessories and then then we can do dread dungeon on nightmare is what I'm thinking because that's another one we need for um eternal defender Now that I'm thinking about it, you probably should just complete this map for the first time on uh, on Nightmare. No, uh, no real reason to do it on Insane, to be honest. You, yeah, like the extra stats you're gonna get from the mythical accessories aren't gonna be, you know, required. It's a nice little boost, but it's not necessary by any means. Might as well just do it on Nightmare. Could do, uh, could do it on Nightmare straight after this, that's uh, not a problem. So, the pets we're looking for like I said at the beginning of the video, are going to be a genie. And any genie, really. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. And um, guardian pets. Those are for our AFK summoners that we're going to be wanting to use for survival. We'll be using uh, Huntress and Monk Guardians on those to boost uh, LTs. And once I get one that is actually usable, I'll explain those in a bit more depth. Because it, it does matter how they roll. Funny how this core is clipping into the floor a bit there. I never noticed that. Oh, this one is as well. Yeah, they do seem a bit lower down than some other cores in the game.
Oh, really? That's interesting. An archer, maybe? Might have been better to do a reflect wall here instead of the uh, web wall. Not quite sure why I'm sitting on my Jester, to be honest. I don't really need the XP. Yeah, I don't have uh, upgrading priorities set up. Properly. I would like to have it so that sea bombs get upgraded uh, before auras. It's not something I've bothered to set up yet. Now, something I was thinking of doing is not really investing much into a upgrade jester at all. And just going straight for um, an upgrade or adept with the staff that drops from the Tinkerer's Lab. The uh, proto staff. But I'm not, I'm still on the fence about that. I probably will. Because if that's the case, then there's no point really doing uh, Hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I'm undecided. But if you're unfamiliar with uh, the Hermit's Towers, the, this particular one, the Sea Bomb Tower, it makes a really good um, single target. It just melts single target, basically. And it's not bad at clearing out trash either. As you probably saw in the first episode, it can... I mean, very effectively kill any non-poison, like, poison uh, immune mob because of that explosion effect. But in the late game, when everything just dies to LTs anyway, they just make for good um, single target, basically ogre killers. Since the poison damage that they apply, it um, ramps up. So every tick of damage does more damage. I believe that's what's happening. I It might just be that 
every time it's reapplying the poison, it's adding both poisons together. I'm not entirely sure on how exactly that works. But when you see the damage number on an ogre, for example, you see like the damage number getting higher and higher every time, so I'm pretty sure that it does more damage per tick every time it ticks. So, for the random rewards we're looking for at the end of this map, um, there's a little trick you can do. If you... If the, all your characters in the map are all the same class, so you're... Well, not all the same class, but only able to use one type of weapon, then it actually reduces the overall pool of weapons that you're going to receive. So, because I'm trying to get... I'm trying to specifically get more pets from doing this. I'm going to do the last wave with three characters that can only use monk weapons. Uh, that'll re reduce the amount of weapons we get overall and therefore open up sort of the reward slots for pets. It is something I should have done on Moonbase as well because... Uh, this map and Moonbase share the same random uh, rewards. There's probably a bunch of other maps as well, but for early game maps, it uh, makes for really easy genie and uh, guardian pet acquisition. So here I'm going to be joining in on my Hermit, because he can only use monk weapons. And I have my tower booster monk and my hero, or uh, DPS monk. And then my builder initiate, so that's four characters that can only use monk weapons. Also, you will now be enjoying the sound of LTs blasting in your right here. Oh wow, a mythical. It's garbage, obviously. Ah, that's a bit better. Now the sound is uh, a bit more equalized. Damn, that ogre got kind of close, huh?
Okay, well, there we go. Let's see. Did we get anything? We got a G. Or is this the same genie that... <laughs> that's the same genie, right? Yeah, that's the genie that I unequipped because it's locked. Okay, let's just pretend we got that. XD. I mean, I did get it from this. It's just that... I uh, messed up the audio. We've got some ultimate weapons as well. Some transcendent gear. I do believe that isn't my adept pristine. She is. All right. Oh, we have an upgrade for her when she levels up. Um, yeah, I could definitely use that. Or, is this my old stuff? Yeah, this is the stuff I previously got that I just took off for this. Okay, we could put that on uh, DPS. Could use that as well. That's my old stuff. Keep that. Keep that. Keep that. Oh, wow. I will keep that as well. All right. So, now that I've done that, let's just re-equip these real quick. Let's see. Some glasses we can put on. I think we'll put on... Put those on. And then you get this accessory. Well, it's bugged at the moment because I've splits in, but normally it shows up on your back, that circle. It's a decent hat. Go with those glasses. But yeah, the fact that this map uh, now rewards, because this map didn't always reward the hat, it used to just be the glasses. And they added the hat onto it as well, so... It's a pretty, pretty nice accessory farm now, early game. Can boost your stats quite a lot. Okay, let's see, do I want this one? We could go with this one. And then some glasses. Go with these. Still need something for our hermit. Oh, we leveled up. Yeah, we'll go with that. And that. Let's see. Any of these accessories good for us, Summoner? Yeah, I'll just put that hat on. Just re equip the genie. Alright, now let's go do this on um, Nightmare.
something you should be doing, or something I am going to do, is um, add in characters for this... Um, for this run to get XP, because this map does give quite a decent amount of XP. For this point in the game, anyway. And then once we do this, that'll knock off one map for um, Eternal Defender. I believe, since we haven't done Nightmare Dread Dungeon yet, so... Yeah, it'll be the first map. And for the first wave, I think I'm going to do a Reflect Beam here. Well, for the whole run. Anyway, there'll be a Reflect Beam here. And how are we looking up front here? How? Hmm. I'll put one here as well. Let's go with the Seed Bomb Towers again. I quite liked how that performed. For the first wave, I'm just going to plonk down a fireball tower right here. Just because these mobs at the back here like to be a nuisance. Interesting, did I not... Uh... Hmm. Should probably put some LTs down. Can I fit in a DST there? It appears no. Nice, it appears we have a couple of stuck orcs over here. Oh. Okay, okay. What did I just... What did I sell if I didn't sell the LT? Oh, I, I put down more than one. I see. That does explain that. Uh, right, so I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put a golem instead of the seed bomb tower up front. So we'll do we'll do one like this and one like this, but then we'll have a golem right there. And you could do that uh do. You could use that one uh DU left over for a another reflect beam or something. Oh yeah, I have a transcendent accessory, don't I?
Right, let's add in characters to level. I completely forgot about that. What am I going to add? Uh, probably the Adept and... Go with this one. And... DPS Monk. Oh, Tower Boost Monk. Which one first? Tower Boost, I think. That's unfortunate. be a bad idea to get these seed bomb towers upgraded. Doesn't look like my initiate is going to be getting much XP. Surely I didn't upgrade the... Yeah, I didn't upgrade... Oh, I don't have enough mana, that's why.
So I'm going to be doing the same thing for the final wave of this map, being on four characters that can only use um, monk weapons. And hopefully we get a genie this run that's better than the one I already have. Guardian pet would be nice as well, of course. Well, that's everything upgraded. Still don't have any gear for our tower booster, but that's something I'm hoping we can fix with a couple runs of Dread Dungeon, or maybe just one run, probably. Especially with the uh, with the chests being so rewarding. Ideally, what we get from Dread Dungeon is a a tower boost set and like uh, I'd probably want two two or three builder sets in uh, of transcendent gear that is and I don't. Honestly, I think I would want to just upgrade all my gear to Transcendent. But then again, I don't think we we don't need to do that just from Dread Dungeon. Probably just probably just like upgrade our apprentice set to Trans and uh, get like a Tower Boost set, and that's probably good. After that. We can move on to King's Game, I think is my plan. Do King's Game on campaign. And probably complete the map as a Huntress. Through four Huntresses to get a... To try and get a pawn shot. Or maybe that's thinking too far ahead. My thought process for that is that... That could be like a starter EV weapon. But that's probably too far ahead in the future to worry about. Probably better just to get apprentice weapons or something. Or monk. Right, what are we doing? Um, hermit. And we need to be on a monk here. Well, he won't be getting to uh, level 73. This character does, oh, it does have gear, but I didn't upgrade it, so he has no resistances. Yeah, it was probably kind of a waste of time thinking about it to like focus on 
DPS gear this early on. Probably only worth once you once you're swimming in transcendent gear. Then you can get a DPS set going and actually have it matter, because then you'll be needing to use a DPS character at that point in the game. At the moment, we can do everything with just towers. We're not focusing on doing any maps that even have bosses on them. So there's really not much point in focusing on DPS gear. Oh, that's annoying. I'm just going to tower boost, because why not? Got a hundred tower boost. It's not insignificant. One hundred and thirty mythicals, huh? That's quite a few. Some of these could be upgrades, but I, uh, I'm not really bothered about it. Right, so we have this monk leveled, so this one could be our tower booster. But ooh, there you go. Look at that. Two genies. Oh my god! Look how many guardians we got as well. Okay, wait, two huntresses and two monks. <laughs> All right. I'm happy about that. Let's see, are either of these really good? Oh, look at that. Requires level 83, but that's a nice one right there. I'm keeping both of those anyway. That's what you love to see right there. And... Some transcendent gear. I'm gonna keep both of those. A supreme. What what the hell is this accessory? It's just a random reward accessory that's supreme. Uh what character is in leather? Because that Depending... Let's just lock all of these. Do I care about this? No, those stats are too low. Okay, well, judging by the mana value on these accessories, doesn't look like... Um, I'm not too hopeful, put it that way. In fact... Uh, we'll keep those. Will we? Uh, it doesn't have HP, but oh well. Uh, well, now we don't need those. And we don't need those. Um, mm, nah. All trash, I'm afraid. All trash. But wow, I'm really happy with the, the Guardian situation we got right here. So, what you want for Guardians is the range. I'm not... I don't actually know the cap on the range. But if you see a number like this, like, you know, they're all over a thousand. That's like all you care about. And then what you're looking for after that is the boost to be over 40. And then with enough upgrades to get the um, number of towers to six. Now, unfortunately, it looks like this one is not very good. Because the upgrade cap for the boost is 20, I believe. Let's test that out real quick. What are we upgrading? So we hold shift here. See, it goes to number of ta uh, towers to boost. And it's not upgrading the boost anymore. And we're not even going to be able to get it to 6. So yeah, this one... I mean, it is technically usable as a first one, but it's not ideal, right? Whereas this one is is pretty perfect. 
Um, the monk, yep, that's even better. It's even got like hero HP, which is good for an AFK summoner. Tons of upgrades. Defense and range, both overcapped like crazy. This one, it's, it is better than that other Huntress, but it's still not as good because the defense boost stat actually caps at 40, I believe, and we can't upgrade it to 40, so... And it doesn't have enough upgrades to get it to um, six towers. Again, usable, but not as good as the other ones. And then both genies, very nice. And we'll just put the gear in there. So yeah, very successful map. And next time we will be doing Ember Mount, I believe, first wave. I think that's next on the list. Get all our characters uh, to level 78. And then off to Dread Dungeon. <laughs>